we're going to talk about the classes today, and we have several of the instructors here, which I'm delighted, uh, and they're going to share their uh, information, and I also have some written uh, things for you. But to start us off, uh, Eckert's going to talk about the arrangement for the class. All right. Well, good morning. Uh, we are looking forward to a, a great uh, spring 2020 with an outstanding class program of Naples Mug and uh, Madeline and Jeff, and maybe Marty will talk about uh, the details, uh, the content of, uh, of these classes later on. I just want to briefly tell you uh, the organization for these classes. Uh, we have been able to uh, continue to conduct our classes at the Naples Conference Center, which we for the first time used uh, earlier this year, which is an out outstanding conference facility. And we are very pleased that we were able to uh, get access to that conference center again at the same terms uh, as, as, as this year. Uh, in uh, 2020, we'll have 10 classes beginning in early uh, January that will take place on Saturdays from 9.45 to 12.45. Uh, because the, the, the rent of the conference center uh, is expensive, uh, we have decided to rent the place each Saturday for just three hours. That means that we can access the place at 9.30, but we have to leave it at 12.30. I know that many of our members like to arrive early just to secure a good seat, but also to chat and talk. And uh, while this is a wonderful thing to do, uh, we cannot really do it because it would be cost prohibitive. So unfortunately, we have to ask our membership to arrive just not before 9.30 and leave also at 12.30 very, very shortly. We will be able, as, as we were earlier this year, to do the entire uh, class registration online on our website, Naples Mark. And uh, we hope that we will be able to eliminate an intermediary, Acceptiva, which we used earlier this year uh, to uh, manage the payment through Apple Pay and then use Acceptiva to enter the registration data into our own database. Uh, we have uh, Ed Evans, one of our members, who is a fabulous uh, programmer, is working on eliminating one step, making the administration of our class registration easier. Uh, you will receive confirmation and you will also be able to check online uh, the classes for which you have registered. Some of you will register for several classes at once and later on may not remember exactly what did they register for. So there's an easy step online to check your registration. Uh, the fees should remain uh, the same $15 a class, uh, which we've had done for a couple of years. We also will offer again, like in 2019, a package deal. Anyone who signs up for 10 classes uh, at, the at the same time will get one class for free. Uh, that's really uh, what it is. Also, I should mention that uh, as we uh, recall this meeting today using Zoom, uh, we should also be able to use the Zoom, the Zoom process our class program and what this will mean uh, uh, is two things. We will be able to record our classes and make them available online on our website later on, but we should also be able to allow remote participants to actually uh, participate in the actual class. Uh, we, we Theoretically, we are able to do that I have to await a board meeting next week whether we really want to proceed with that and how to uh, manage uh, that thing. But we have the potential which would make, I think, our whole organization even more, has, will have more potential for spreading out and will make us a, a, a very attractive organization as far as Macintosh users are concerned. Okay, that's... Can you move this? Uh... I can... Uh, I, would, I, would, I just want to move it over to the edge or to the bottom or something. Yeah, I can. I can. Yeah, so, because I have a well, lot of words on this. You want it down, down here, maybe? Or? Far away as possible from the screen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
We want to see your face. So. Oh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I have listed the classes here, but we are going to go through them one by one. And uh, they will appear on our website uh, no later than November 1. So if you can't remember what you saw today, <clears throat> you can check the website out then. And I believe sometime in that time frame, George, we will be opening for a registration. Is that correct? Yeah, we hope to be ready. Right. Um, before we start, the first two classes are related to the MAC. Um, and the, particularly the first class, the uh, upgrades for Catalina, which is the uh, new operating system for our Macs. Uh, I know a lot of you have not downloaded it yet because of some of the bugs and things. However, I'm sorry, it's echoing. Remote participants got our let's see now. Hello? Uh, Hello? Please do not speak. Hold on just a second here. Well, there was a the chat, the chat thing in the middle. Yeah, I have a, uh, I decided to hide. George, this is a good reason not to do this at the class. <laughs> well, I did something I wanted to. Uh, uh, did you find it? Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have your regular window up there. For those remote people that are on, please make no sounds. Please. All right, let's go ahead. I have I hit the uh, the menu bar and I can't get it back right now. So. Well, does it still work if it's hidden? Oh, you don't need my picture, so don't worry about that. We're all set. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead, and if we run into problem again, we'll stop. Anyways, I started to say the first two classes are going to be about our Mac specifically Catalina being the new operating system. And um, I wanted to put up the uh, devices that were eligible for the uh, Catalina. I think by January, a lot of the bugs will be out and I think a lot of us will be able to download it. And even if we can't, it's good to know what we will look forward to when we can download it. Uh, so I'm gonna ask Jeff uh, to talk about his classes uh, the first one is what's new in Catalina. And then the second one I'm so excited about too. <laughs> you can stand anywhere that's convenient. Okay. Okay, so yeah, what we're gonna do is the first class, uh, if you have not installed Catalina yet, I'm the guinea pig that's doing it right now. So I've had Catalina installed for probably four months with the beta versions. So I've seen all the things that are happening that you're hearing about. And uh, prior to the public release, I, I would send emails to Apple to report these things so they could squash most of them before they were, it was released to the public. But as you may have heard, there are some issues, especially with some older apps that uh, are not compatible with Catalina. So what I'm going Can we interrupt you, oh, Sammy? Yes. Can you- Could you stop? Could you get that out? <laughs> Of the video participants. Yeah, there we are. Okay, can you move that guy over? Yeah, so can you move this guy over? Oh, we have to scoot up. So. 
No, I want you to move that. Yeah. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, what I'll cover first is how to make sure that your apps that you're using will work under Catalina. Because as you may have heard, uh, Catalina is only what they call 64-bit, which is a different processing type that is only for Catalina. If you have anything that is not 64-bit, which would be an older app, it would be 32-bit, like Microsoft Word 2011, Quicken 2007, and you install Catalina, they just won't work. And there's not an easy way to go back. There's a way to go back, but it's about 15 long steps in about probably eight hours of work. So I'll cover that. I'll cover, uh, you might have heard that iTunes has been split up. Uh, so we're going to have three different apps, music, TV, and podcasts, whereas before those were all in iTunes. We're going to cover some of the new features in photos, notes, and reminders. Uh, Safari has some new features. Mail has some new features. Uh, the backup formats with Catalina right now are also a little different as far as the way you have to format your external drive that you're using for either backup or super duper or carbon copy cloner. So whatever backup system you have, I'm going to cover the different drive formats you have to use when you're setting up an external drive for formatting. I'll cover uh, the new sidecar feature, which lets you use your iPad as a display from your laptop or iMac. So you can walk around the house and look at your computer screen on your iPad with no extra software or anything that's built into Catalina. Uh, we'll cover some of the screen time uh, that's available for the Mac that's been available for the iOS devices for a few, year, few years. There's a few security updates. Uh, you can now approve uh, items and, and unlocks and such with your Apple Watch if you have one. And we'll also talk about some quick time home app and iCloud Drive <laughs> updates. And anything else that may come up before the class date, I'll add to the agenda if there's anything noteworthy that is discovered or introduced in an update since then. Uh, as, as I have listed at the bottom paragraph, um, some of the updates that uh, Jeff is gonna talk about, we will also have some of the other instructors talk about them. Uh, photos and iCloud, Marty is gonna go into that much further, more deeply rather than just the updates. And uh, Jim Corsica also is going to go into the iTunes transition uh, more deeply in his program. So you'll have a chance to look at the uh, update and you'll have a chance to get uh, a deeper look at it. Now the next class that we're going to do I think is absolutely the greatest thing to have <laughs> since sliced bread because we're always looking for tricks and tips about uh, things to do on our computer. I think that we only use about 5% of the things that we could possibly do. So um, uh, these are the topics that Jeff is going to try to cover with tips and tricks. There's 50 altogether, Jeff. And there may be more, but I'm going to cover <laughs> things that you can do to simplify your use of the computer. Instead of uh, going through three different clicks and different menus, I'm going to show you how to do things in one click or with one key in one click. I'll show you how to uh, tricks for searching, quick tricks for uh, using your iPad along with your Mac. So all these items and maybe a few more will be covered. I'll be giving demonstrations of each tip that I'm giving so that you can practice if you have your laptop with you or the notes uh, that I'll make available for the class that uh, you probably wouldn't want to print because it'll be about a, uh, over 100 pages. But if you want to <laughs> keep it on your iPad or your computer and bring it with you to follow along, they'll, have, they'll be illustrated as well. So I'll have both. Uh, you can follow along as we go, but if not, there will be a uh, backup for you in print in a PDF form that you can see what happened, as well as uh, we may have a video access. I'm not sure if we, did we record the classes? No, Have not we? usually. Probably the length would be. one of the things we need to Yeah, we may or may not have a recording. So the notes will be a good uh, mirror of what I'm going to be talking about in the class. And that will include everything you see on this list, which is quite a few things, and, and probably a few more as they come up. So it'll probably be between 50 and 60 ways that you'll learn to better use your device, specifically your, your Apple computer or laptop. The nice thing about these classes also that I'd like to mention is each of the instructors provide some backup notes 
uh, which you which will be on our website and that you can download. Um, you can print them out. I keep them um, on my uh, computer or as, there are several years of notes and they stay on the website for a long time. And, you know, even classes that I teach, sometimes I forget a specific command that I have to do to do something and uh, or they changed it from one operating system to another. So that's which is really great that the instructors provide some take home notes so that you don't have to be taking notes down in the class. You can be just watching what's going on and then refer to them if you want to try some of this stuff at home. So thank you, Jeff. Absolutely. We really look forward to your classes. It'll be fine. So hope to there. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, Marty and he's going to be teaching uh, two classes for us. One is on iCloud and the other is on photos. So Marty, you're on. Oh, there's the first one. Um, I'm going to um, uh, not not do uh, the survey kinds of things that I've done the last couple of years. Um, uh, normal, normally the way I teach uh, iCloud, and I teach at FTCU as well, and we start with the sort of basics of what's a hard drive and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to assume that our group already knows that. Uh, and then um, we'll, we'll just be talking about how do I really use it? Um, what, what steps should I take? There's always a question about if I put it on, if I put something in the cloud, what happens to it? If I delete it here, what happens? You know, all those kind of technical, practical questions. So, uh, so this class is going to be more of a, more of that kind of, a, more of that kind of a class and not, not just a, a survey kind of class. And for those of you who are saying, but I don't know any of that basic stuff. The notes, as Marilyn said, are on the website. Uh, you can go look them up. Uh, they're also in the, in the tab at the top of our website that says prior meetings. So when we've done a meeting that was specifically to a target uh, subject, you can go look at those presentations and they're there. Okay, you ready for the other one? I am. All right, I, uh, I have to get to it, just a second. Here we go. The, the other <laughs> one is, uh, is uh, about photos. And, and my approach on photos is going to be similar, uh, but what's, what's really exciting to me is the new photos with Catalina is really brilliant. Uh, for those of you who say, oh, gee, I need Lightroom, or I really need uh, Photoshop, or I need uh, Lumina, or some of these other programs, the new photos is, uh, it's just really exciting. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the, the second paragraph there where it says, where do my photos go? You know, when I take a when I take a picture on my camera, how does it get to where it's supposed to go, and how do I get it at home? Uh, we'll cover that kind of stuff because that comes up all the time. And then the second half, uh, we'll spend time on the, on editing, uh, and uh, uh, there's some really nice features in there now about repairing old photos. You know, when you take a scan of a photo that's uh, from 1945 or 1965, it sort of looks crappy. How do you make that look? look better and the new photos really let you do that. So uh, it, it will be fun, we'll have fun. Um, and then they've added all sorts of things about memories and slideshows and albums and that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll have a little bit of fun. You can bring your computers obviously or your iPads and iPhones and, and uh, learn something. And I use, I use Marilyn's, uh, if you look at my notes from last year, I use Marilyn's uh, slides for <laughs> reference because she's got the best slides for all of her photo classes. And she just, she just uh, is trying to train me. So I'm <laughs> good over here. Yeah, the nice thing about, uh, I was going to say something really nice about you, Marty. Now. I just lost my train of thought. But anyway. Do I have something nice? <laughs> it happens all the time. Somebody wants to say something nice, then they forget it. It comes back every time. Uh, Jeff, do you, uh, do you want to do your third class or can you hang on for a little while here? Okay, thank you. All right. Oh, look who's here. Yay. <laughs> we are so lucky. Well, most of our instructors are here today. Uh, anyway, the, the, uh, what Marty was saying, I think this is what I had in mind, is if you go to the website, you can see the notes from last year and the year before and the year before. Now, 
the upside is if you forgot how to do something or you want to go back to see a class that has some basic information in it, you can do that. The downside is Apple changes their operating system every year. So some of the slides may not be true as of now. Um, okay, our next presenter is Jim Corsica, and um, he's going to be uh, talking about all the new and crazy things Apple does to us. <laughs> his, class is, Morning, his class is called Entertainment. 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 Yes. Yes, uh, we offered this for the first time last year, and I would guess that uh, this year is probably going to be 40 to 50 percent different from last year because of all things that are happening. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, iTunes is going to be broken up into three apps, uh, music, podcast, and the TV app. There's also, uh, right now, the, the field is becoming very, very competitive on streaming services. Beginning November 1st, there's going to be a whole bunch of new streaming services. Uh, Apple, TV+, Plus debuts on November 1st. Disney's got its monster streaming service coming out soon. And then there's HBO Max, uh, and even NBC has one coming out. In addition to the already existing Amazon Prime, which just won a whole bunch of Emmys, Hulu, which has been around for a long time, and Netflix, of course, which is the King Kong and the, but, you know, I've just mentioned seven streaming services, and they're all competing for your dollars. And um, <laughs> you mean people only had half of me? <laughs> How rude. Anyway, um, they're all competing for your dollars, and a, a service like Apple TV Plus is offering the service for five bucks a month to begin with. Now, granted, they don't have a they don't have a, a big lineup coming. I think there's something like 10 shows that they're debuting with. But even Disney is, is starting up with a bargain price of like six or seven bucks a month. Anyway, I plan to sign up for all, if not most of these, so that I have first had an experience with it. I've been streaming for years with Netflix and Hulu and uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, and we'll be doing that. Uh, we'll also be covering transferring music either by download or off of your CDs. And uh, uh, hopefully that'll assist you in your knowledge and in your pocketbook. Okay, any questions? Are you getting the new phone? Do you get the free Apple Plus? I'm gonna pay for the Apple Plus. Um, no, I'm not getting a new phone. I have an iPhone 10, I'm happy with it, Mary. Yes, uh, I'll probably be using it that day. That's another thing about recording it, George. I'm probably going to be showing some, at least snippets of copyrighted material. I don't know if you're going to be able to record that. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have a question for Jeff. Jeff, is the new Apple Music split Catalina dependent, or is it a separate upgrade? It's it's with Catalina, Apple Music became. So there is no splitting if you don't have Catalina. Well, iTunes is now called Apple Music, just like it is on your phone. Uh -huh. You have a button that says Music, okay. which is your iTunes library, basically. But Apple Music is a service that's $10 a month. Yeah, I'm going to sign up for that, too. I, I'm not currently signing up. The Music app is now standalone with Catalina. It with Catalina. That's going to be a problem I because I haven't used I haven't downloaded Catalina yet because I've been so scared by the posts I've read. Yeah, so when you, you I should take your class and that will solve the problem. <laughs> right. You have three weeks to prepare or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks. Thank you, Jim. We let our experts figure out all this technical stuff. That's why there are instructors. We pick the best people to do that. Uh, and uh, I think it's terrific that they can explain this to us in 
plain English. <laughs> so that's what's really great about all this stuff. You know, uh, technology today is so advanced that even people that are interested in it and work with it all the time have a struggle to keep up with it. You know, um, I know Jeff has all with all the knowledge he has, he also has to take classes sometimes on the new stuff that Apple does. So yeah, I know it can get very complicated, but we want to make the best, best use of what we have. Okay, our next presenter um, is Ed Evans. And I'm really happy that he's here today. And you can say whatever you want, Ed. Uh, but if you could come up, uh, and I'm, let me pull up that class. This is another new class that we're offering this time. And Ed and um, Wayne, our, Wayne Mertz, are going to do a, a pair together for this class. And uh, I, I, it was my idea to pair them together because I thought it was so related. And uh, Wayne is gonna talk about the process of setting up home automation. And you can, it can be as simple as uh, turning your lights on and off in your house or it can be as complicated as having everything automated in your house. Uh, but in the past year or two, Apple and other technologies have made this. Oh. I didn't like my speech. <laughs> have uh, made it easier uh, to do. And so we're going to try to present that. And one of the pieces of putting together uh, home automation is to have some kind of hub and a lot of these hubs are digital assistants and they're sort of connected separately and together to do that so um, Ed is going to be doing the digital assistance but maybe you can talk a little bit about what Wayne's piece is going to be too you didn't expect to speak today did you? I did not? No, I, did. I came <laughs> listening I was hoping I might make it <laughs> I had no idea you were in town, so I'm delighted yeah, that yeah, you can in, be uh, here. Just yesterday afternoon. Oh, wow. <laughs> Still unpacking, uh, trying to make my home automation things work properly as I move from one part of the country to another. Uh, Alexa moves back and forth, and sometimes she objects. <laughs> uh, we seem to be having a nice conversation today. And, uh, yeah, I didn't plan on saying anything today. I was coming to listen, so I'll just say, okay, here I am. It's, it's the, the, the home and the, the digital assistant part is just a whole lot of fun. Uh, the things that uh, Alexa can do for me and for you is kind of, kind of wild. Uh, Alexa works really, really well, I've found, uh, with Apple's HomeKit. And uh, that's sort of side of the of the coin but my new rule is if it doesn't work with both Alexa it I'm not going to get it I'm not going to plug it in uh, because those things work well uh, I've got a kind of a crazy array of devices around my house that are controlled by both and I can tell Alexa to turn something on or to move the music from here to there or whatever and work pretty well even to controlling the irrigation on the lawn so we can do a lot of different things. Uh, that's about all I can say right now, unless you've got something else. Specific. No, I was just going to say that you can use a digital assistant without necessarily having home automation. In other words, you oh, yeah. can use it for other things. Uh, what are some of the things that, that you use it for? Uh, shopping list. Shop, right. You can shop, listen to the shopping list, your to-do list, uh, appointments and calendar type things. Uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of things you can play music, do. play music, ask questions, yeah, yeah. things like that. So it's, uh, uh, but it is an integral part of having home automation. And uh, if you ever, if you saw Wayne's presentation last year, he has it doing a lot of things in his house, including remotely opening and closing his garage door, which I thought was kind of interesting since he was doing it in Buffalo. He was here, but he was opening his garage door in Buffalo. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, the other uh, thing I would say is I, there's an advertisement on TV. If you watch regular TV, which we probably, most of us don't watch much of it anymore, 
but Delta had an ad. Uh, now you can uh, turn your faucet on with your iPhone. But that was kind of interesting. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a new one. It's you know it's it can be uh, it could be window shades or it could be lights or it could be the thermometer in your home. All different kinds of things that you can control just from your phone or other control device that you would use. And as we age, it's also nice. Uh, I mean, I remember when I was young, you had to get up to turn the channel. No. Now you just sit in your chair and do it. And you can also watch movies and do whatever else you want in your life. So uh, there's uh, that's a nice advantage to us elderly. That, that Delta thing is, it doesn't just turn the faucet on. It will measure out two and a half cups for you. <laughs> that sort of thing. It's, it was pretty wild. <laughs> Anyway, thanks, Ed. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh. uh, Jeff, I'm going to ask you to come up and uh, talk about your protection class. <laughs> so basically, as you probably noticed lately, uh, spam phone calls, emails that look suspicious, website pop-ups have been getting more and more prevalent. And it's because these people are succeeding in separating you from your money. So the thing is, it's probably going to get worse before it gets better because I've just seen it multiply. I get two or three calls a week about a scam that someone has usually fallen prey to and they after they've given their credit card and hung up they call me and say what happened and it's by then it's too late so this class is going to tell you how to avoid and identify those types of attempts to separate you from your money and your sanity because it, it's driving people crazy because you're always having to look out for this stuff and this is something we didn't have to worry about even 10 years ago these attempts like this so we're going to cover how these scams work, who the perpetrators are, how to identify an illegitimate email, and the only way you success successfully unsubscribe from emails when given that option, how to create a new email address. We'll spend uh, probably a third of the class on password management because that's one of your biggest blockades against these kinds of intrusions is having a good <laughs> password system. I'll focus on a program called One Password. There are a couple other ones like that, and they all kind of work the same way, but I'm gonna to talk to you uh, specifically about how to create good, strong passwords that'll help you circumvent these attempts to get into your data and uh, cause you a lot of stress. Uh, we'll also talk about how to uh, identify and avoid website pop-ups, what to do if a web page or some kind of program appears to take control of your computer. Uh, with the new iOS 13 that's on your iPhone, I'll talk about how you can prevent spam calls on that and how to block those and also how to identify secure websites. So in this class, I'm going to tell you not only how to identify and avoid, but how to prepare yourself for future attacks because that's what they are. And they're, like I said, they're, it's going to get worse before it ever gets better. So if anybody has some ideas on, uh, you know, how to stop this, we can make a lot of money <laughs> because it's a problem uh, and there's nobody that's immune from it. If you're online on a computer, you're going to see this stuff. So uh, I'll be able to tell you how you can protect yourself a little better. And uh, one of the big components is having good, strong passwords and having a good system to remember those. You know, post-it notes strung around your office is not a good password system. So we'll talk about a way that you can get your passwords under control and that'll be a big part in building a fortress against these kind of attacks. So that'll be a good class and there's gonna be information for everyone because there's no one that's immune from this if you've got any electronic device these days. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Has anyone been getting, okay, my husband's phone, his phone number is calling his watch. It's, it's a spoof. What is this? <laughs> it's, it's a spoof and it's like, uh, I've gotten calls that look like they're from me. Yeah. And it's a spoof because the watch actually has its own number yeah. that's assigned by Verizon or AT&T and you, it doesn't work on its own really, but because right. it, it's tied to your phone number. But if they got your, it'll, they can make it look like that. 
So you can, it looks like it's, it's your brother. It looks like it's you calling yourself. There, there's no shortage. If your number is been anywhere public, you're susceptible to that kind of attempt. Yeah, they're masking their number. I've had calls that uh, it says Jeff Bohr on my phone and I can't call myself. But it's another number in India or whatever and they just masked it. And they can apparently do it with a few keystrokes because it's happening all the time. And it could happen to a watch because they have a unique number. So you can't block it on the watch, I guess? You can't block it on the watch. You'd have to block it on the phone. But then because the number's really not him, though. So that's a tricky one to block because if, if I get a call from myself, I can't. I guess I could block myself because I never would be calling myself. Right. So you could probably safely block yourself. But any other numbers that you don't know, you can easily block. I'll show you how to do that if you're not comfortable. It's so complicated. Yeah. How many of you have uh, gotten grandma calls? Oh yeah. I got a grandpa call. Yeah. <laughs> you mean a person from India? My yes. My grandson called, told me he was in jail in uh, Arkansas and he needed some money. And he actually said, this is Leo. Did he and say it it's a Leo? Like Leo? Really? Yeah. Wow. And so I called my daughter and I said, where's Leo? Where's he in school. <laughs> I said, you sure he's not in jail? Jill in Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it's never my grandsons because they would never call me on the phone. They would try to get me through Facebook or uh, text or something like that. So, yeah, if, if you pick up the phone and they say, hi, grandma, or hi, grandpa, yeah, you know, goodbye. Anyway. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Let's see what we haven't covered yet. Okay. Um, the next uh, class I'm going to talk about is class that I was teaching, and it's um, um, iOS 13 on the iPhone. And uh, I put up some of the uh, iPhones and iPads that are capable of using iOS uh, 13. Um, I recommend, unless your phone or your iPad won't do it, I highly recommend that you upgrade uh, to uh, the new operating systems because they always make things easier and better and there's no reason not to, to do that. Uh, I will say that some of the uh, features that come up new each time do not always work on every phone and every iPad, even if they're eligible for the updating, but most of them do. So it's, it's worth doing. Um, you never know whether you, what generation you have. <laughs> I wish they would call them different things or call them uh, California locations or something like they do with the uh, computer because uh, it, it would make it a lot easier. Uh, I'm not sure what generation. I know I have an iPad Pro, but 11 inch and the 10 and a half inch, I think are the same size because they measure it differently. And so it's a little confusing, um, but you can look at your device, go to uh, uh, about in your settings and it'll should tell you which one that you have. Um, let's talk about iOS 13 on the iPhone. Um, I'm going to suggest that anybody who has an iPad also come to this class because there's a, a, so many new features on the iPad that are not on the iPhone that I'm not going to have time to cover all the iPad separately. Uh, so I, I will cover some of them twice, the ones that I think you probably will um, need a lot of help with or would be interested in using. But anybody who has, has an iPad, please, please come to this class as well as the iPad class. Um, there are a lot of features on the um, I iOS 13 in regular apps that we use all the time, like maps, uh, messages, reminders, calendar, excuse me, <clears throat> Uh, mail, music, notes, Safari, things that we use every day. Uh, also, uh, they have changed Find My Phone and Find My Friend. And I think, Jeff, you're going to talk about that too, right? Uh, they've changed how... Uh, 
find yeah. my as far as uh, Catalina as well. Right. If I put just find my in there, you wouldn't know what I was talking about. So, <clears throat> but they've changed the way you do find my phone and find my, my friend. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm also going to talk about using the dark mode um, on the phone. Um, I use, I don't use dark mode all the time, but sometimes it's more convenient to use dark mode. Uh, like sometimes when I'm in, in here and I'm taking notes on my iPad, I will go to dark mode because I don't want to annoy the person sitting next to me with the bright light of my iPad. So that, that would be a reason that isn't just because I love dark mode, because on some apps I like it, on some apps I don't like it. I always use it when I read in bed, <clears throat> which I shouldn't be doing, but I do it, uh, because then I don't have that bright light shining in my face. Uh, and I, I don't know, does it work, Jeff, better uh, when you are outside in a bright light, if you're in dark mode? I like dark mode outside better. Yeah. And if you have a new iPhone 11, they do much better in bright light uh -huh. than prior phones did. But I, 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 I've been thinking dark mode on mine on all the time on my phone. Another thing that has come up um, with the iOS system, <clears throat> I don't know why I'm having this little bad throat here, um, is location controls. Um, Apple asks you a lot more often, um, do you want this app to use this location control? And you have a lot of chances to answer that. The new keyboard features for, for text, writing text is, is great. It makes it so easy to move your cursor around. And I love voice control. Voice control is primary for people. It's an accessibility uh, app but uh, it's a hands, no hands app. In other words, people that would have trouble uh, using their hand, they can control everything with their voice, but it's also a, a convenience and a fun thing to work with. Um, I found it very uh, compelling and I also found it very uh, robust in many ways. So we're gonna talk about that. Uh, the share, sharing is different too. Um, some new things to the control center and edit, editing text is another thing. And by the way, you can edit text in voice control. It's amazing. You just say it and it does it. You know, it says replace this word with that word and it does it just when you talk to it. So that would, that's kind of fun. You don't even have to find the word. You just have to say it and it'll work. Uh, so I, I've kind of enjoy that. I found it interesting yesterday. Um, and this was on my iPad, so I don't know, this, pro this probably doesn't apply to the iPhone in the same way because it, iPhone doesn't have slide over, but uh, I was taking these, uh, this little um, group of slides that I made for this meeting and I was going to, I like to transfer it to my iPad because I don't have a, a, a laptop, I just have a big old computer at home. So I like to use my iPad to uh, project on the screen. And I always make it into a PDF because I don't wanna, if I have a keynote, I'll be touching it and I'll mess up something that I shouldn't mess up. So I always put it into a PDF. And it used to be that when I wanted to share it, um, I would move it into files, uh, which is, uh, uh, Marty's gonna talk about, uh, iCloud Drive, which is actually files on your iPhone and your iPad. And I would put it in iCloud Drive and it would show up on my um, computer or on my iPad. So I put it in iCloud Drive, I opened up files and there was my little slideshow that I put together. However, usually when I'm in a, a situation like that, I go to the share sheet and they let me put it in books where my PDFs are kept currently. I couldn't find any way in the sharing app to do that. And that's because now there's new things like drag and drop and all that. So then I remembered I could use slide in the iPad and put up two apps at the same time. And then let's drag this over into my books app. So things change from year. I'm used to doing it, you know, last year, uh, the sharing was so uh, expansive, you could just share to almost any app. 
And now they've changed all that around and you do it in a different way. Now it's probably easier this way, but uh, since I haven't delved deeply into IS 13 yet, I was a little disappointed. Anyway, there's tons of changes uh, for your phone and in general for IS 13. So I hope you will come with, especially if you have an iPad. And if you don't have a phone, that's okay because most of this stuff will work on your iPad anyway. Um, now, Apple has changed iPad operating system to its own operating system. It doesn't work exactly the same as the phone. And uh, it will have many of the same features that you'll see on the iPhone, but it also has some new ones. Uh, multitasking is something we're going to be looking at. That's changed. The split slide over mode, expose, drag and drop. Uh, some changes to the home screen. Uh, Mitch was showing in the a couple weeks ago. Uh, today view also. Uh, how you manage your doc. Uh, also how many um, apps you can have on your home screen. Um, using the, uh, the new Apple Pencil that goes with the uh, iPad Pros uh, can give you instant notes. This sidecar that Jeff mentioned uh, as I say, text ed editing and keyboard have some nice new features. You can also do more things with your fonts and with Safari. Um, so there's a whole bunch of new and exciting things to do with the iPad. Um, so any questions about those two, iPhone and iPad? I use my iPad all day because sometimes I'm too lazy to get out of my armchair to go to the den to work on my computer. Um, so if you send me an email, you'll probably get an answer from my iPad. Okay, and the next new, um, whoops. Now it's, it's not being good to me today. There we go. Okay, the next new um, class we're gonna do is the Apple Watch. Uh, and um, I know that when uh, we did the Apple Watch, when Mitch did it last year, we had a um, breakout crowd here, didn't we, for this, because people are interested in the watch. A lot more people are buying the watch and uh, it's becoming very uh, popular and very handy, like answering your phone when you don't have your iPhone with you. You know, this is kind of a gender issue with me. Um, a lot of women's clothes don't have pockets. Right, so I carry my iPhone in my pocketbook. Uh, I don't carry it around with me around the house either because I have things to do but it's not convenient having my phone with me. Guys say, why do you want to get a watch when you have your phone in your pocket with you all the time? And I said, you don't understand. If you were a woman, you would know that the watch is really critical because you can answer your phone, you can look at your messages, you can look at your mail, you can send, you know, you can do all those things and you don't have to worry about your phone, which is great because when my phone is in the kitchen and I'm in the living room and I get a call on my phone, I can just answer it on my watch. So all the women should be thinking about getting a watch because it really is handy. Mitch? That's very interesting, I was make a comment. I, I sold my watch for and I posted it on the club website and it wasn't on there 10 minutes, I get a knock on the door. And one of my neighbors is a member of the club. She said, don't sell that watch to anybody, I want it. <laughs> and the reason she wanted it is she walks four or five miles a day. And she had one of those straps with her phone and she keeps on sliding down and everything else. And she wanted it for the music and for her audio books. And I ran into her a couple days later and she just said, oh, it's phenomenal. Right. So, and he and the watch that Mitch sold her has GPS on it, which means you don't need to have your phone with you to uh, it, it works through cellular. So there are there are two kinds of watches you can buy. You can buy the kind that dependent on having your phone nearby, or you can buy for a little more money the one that has the cellular on it. So if you don't happen to have your phone or it goes dead on you or something, you can um, get all your uh, information. Uh, through the cellular. So 
Uh, and also they have uh, different um, sizes. They have two different size watches. Generally speaking, the men get the larger size and the women get the smaller size, but you can get whatever size you want and whatever band you want. And the new watches that are coming out, Apple is going to uh, uh, let you pick whatever band you want. They don't sell it with a specific band uh, in the Apple Watch 5. I think that's a nice feature because I always want to get a different band than they want to give me. Anyway, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about three things. Oh, and by the way, next Wednesday here, uh, Sheeta from uh, Detroit is going to remotely do a whole uh, presentation on the Apple Watch. So you might want to come to see that. Uh, and she has some unique way that she's going to do it with a camera and all kinds of things. And if you saw her presentation a couple of weeks ago, it was outstanding. So I would invite you to come. I'm just going to be here for sure. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to spend a little time talking about the basics on the watch. Even if you have a watch, and I've had one for a couple of years, I did not know how to do some of the stuff that you can do with settings. There are settings on your phone. There are settings on your watch. Uh, there are tricks and things that you can do. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how to find your way around the watch. We're going to define complications. If, uh, if you don't know what that is, it's really easy, but it's a strange word for it. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, iOS uh, OS 6, which is, see, they don't do this with other people's presentations, do they? Um, OS 6 has some new features. Um, uh, you can get uh, like seven hours of your audio book directly onto your watch. Uh, you can determine if you have a safe, noise level. This is another of some of the really new features that the watch can do that other things can't do, and that is health apps. Uh, there's uh, cycling, which doesn't apply to most people in this room, menstrual cycling, but also you can follow that completely. Uh, you can track your progress in your activities. Uh, you can add songs from your directly from your watch without going through your phone. Uh, it has a calculator, which was really needed. Uh, and uh, some updates on reminders and things of that sort. So that's the new uh, uh, operating system and it is available now. So if you have a watch, you might wanna do that. Uh, remember to have your watch on, uh, on its charger and your phone nearby when you're updating to uh, a new operating system. And uh, then the uh, Apple Watch 5, which just came out uh, a month or two ago, um, now that feature, my watch is not on all the time, only when I lift my arm, but this, uh, the, the new Apple 5 watch is on all the time. Uh, and it also has a compass on it. It's also made of different materials. You can choose uh, more different kinds of metals and things that it's made out of. Uh, it's more water resistant up to 50 something meters. That sounds right. And, um, it has more advanced metrics for workouts. Uh, so a lot of people use it for their workouts. I'm sorry about that. Can we do anything about it? Who's ever, uh, who's ever out there remotely, every time you move or touch or sneeze or breathe, we hear you. Please. Do whatever you can to keep the noise down. We'd really appreciate it. We have some people listening to us because we're on Zoom, but anyway. Um, and I guess if their microphone is on high, that will happen too. Okay, I think we have covered all the classes. Uh, did I miss any? Let's go back and look at the uh, list. Okay, so Jeff's going to start out with a Catalina features on the new operating system and his 50 plus tips and tricks. I'm not gonna miss that one for sure. Then Marty's gonna do uh, clouds and their uses. Then I'll be up for the iOS phone and iPad. Uh, then Jim's going to do his uh, iTunes transition and streaming and all those good things. Uh, you know, 
we don't watch that regular TV that much anymore. Uh, we watch, you know, every evening, my husband says, what Apple TV thing are you putting on tonight? <laughs> sometimes we watch a series of things or sometimes we watch a movie or whatever. Uh, then I will do the Apple Watch, then Marty's gonna come up uh, with uh, all the updates on photos, especially the new editing features. And then Jeff is gonna do protection and security for the last class. And you all know uh, that we are doing it at the Naples Conference Center. Is there anybody here who doesn't know where that is? You all know where that is, great, okay. Any questions about the programs that you wanna ask the teachers, the instructors here? Remember, if you go take 10 classes, you can get one free, right? And we will be starting um, registering around November 1st. And go, you go, go to the Naples website. Let me say one thing about that. <clears throat> if you remember, the classes are 15, and if you're not, um, I'm going to turn my iPad around. Um, I want to show you this because if you go to the Naples website, do you see on the left side are the across the front and down on the left side are all the tabs. And um, if you go here, oh, that's not where it is. Okay, it must be at the bottom. Uh, oh no, here, the classes are across the top here, okay? So if you go to the classes, you can get the descriptions, uh, registration information, and so forth. And the class notes, you can get all that. If you have a phone or an iPad, and your iPad is in the portrait position, you don't see the um, Sorry. column on the left. So the way that you get there is you tap on the three lines up here. The three lines usually mean there's more to come. So if you tap on the three lines, here are all your tabs. Okay, so if you're using your phone, you will have to do it that way. If you're using your iPad to go onto the site, either put it in the uh, landscape position or touch the three lines in the portrait position. So is that pretty clear how to do that? And then just go to the tab that says classes and this will be filled in shortly. This will be filled in shortly. And uh, the class notes you'll see uh, just before the class uh, starts, uh, we will be putting the notes up um, about three or four days before the class starts. Mitch? So uh, going back to the earlier conversation, are you considering that people will be able to remotely attend the class and pay the fifteen dollars? That's going to be discussed at the board meeting next week. Okay. Uh, some of us have. Some well, of us. Because, I mean, right now, anybody who signs on our site can just hit Zoom and get the get it for free. And I would assume that there would there would be something hooked up where you'd have to pay the fifteen bucks. Right. Yeah. You would have to have uh, probably a password in order to get in. Well, I'd be very interested in that. We have a so, different. But I can give it to you because we want you there. <laughs> if, if everybody goes on Zoom, so we're going to have a lot of empty chairs. <laughs> Why would you not go versus you'd rather do it at home? Well, I mean, let's just say that I, I couldn't get out, get over there in time or whatever. Uh, it also would be a little more difficult to get the questions through. We have a divided board, let me put it that way. Some of us feel this is a good idea and some of us are not so excited about it. So. Yeah, we never know who's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can see today, this technology really annoyed me when I was trying to present this class. Yeah. And it annoyed the people sitting in, the, the people well, sitting in the room. That, that. You were, you were unfortunate. I know. No, I, and I have to say, it was my mistake. I, there is a, a, a control bar, and I decided to hide it so when have, you have a clear display. And I was not able to get back the hidden toolbar to mute the participants who, who caused the noise. I think that was my problem. You, you told me before the meeting we were going to do that, actually. 
<laughs> well, in, you know, actually, there are a lot of great advantages to the to the Zoom program. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, the uh, <coughs> several of the members, uh, George and uh, Conrad and Eckert and others, have been working diligently to try to make this work. And it, it, we are zooming today, so a lot of people who couldn't be here are getting this information today at their home or wherever they might be. Carolyn, can I just say a word yes. about that? The reason we are, uh, the reason we're trying to do this is hopefully everybody that's around in Naples will be at the meeting in person. It's, uh, uh, we'd like a large attendance at the classes. And we, and, and, and the, the major emphasis is going to continue to be to make sure that the people in the room, either in the library or at the conference center, um, have a really great experience. And we're, and Eckhart and, and I were rather embarrassed about what happened today. Uh, and we won't, we'll do everything we can not to let, and we can control that. But, but uh, it, it, we're, you know, it, we're, we're all already in this program. The idea behind the whole Zoom thing is, um, for example, uh, I had a relationship with the Detroit Mac user group, and uh, they had they had three they had three hundred members, and nobody was volunteering, and they finally just gave up. I mean, if there's no volunteers in this group, we can't run. And they had that problem, but much 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 you know to a very negative degree. And they had to close down the groups. So my idea was that, uh, and I had made a couple friends up there, with some of the people remotely, and uh, I got them to join the group. And I said, one of the, and it came up with the idea, we all came up with the idea of maybe we can broadcast our meetings. And actually, the largest Mac user group in the world is in Dubai. <laughs> and uh, they have no meetings. There, everything is everything is, is done remotely. I mean, you can you know, I'm a party get at the meeting from his uh, from his uh, uh, bed. I mean, you, the future the future of of, of of getting these groups to continue to grow is much different than it has been in the past. And and if you look out into the future, it's going to be very important that we can broadcast this and um, and get these uh, other people to join the group. Um, and and Zoom seems to be a successful tool. We just we just are in the process of learning how to use it. And we this week Eckert had uh, has been in close contact with their help help people. And we made some major advancements and a, and a major problem we were having. So, um, and if anybody's familiar with Zoom in the room, or uh, you know, please help us out because we really need more and more expertise on this whole thing. We also are working with the library, and uh, we're going to, I think, see a major improvement in a new projector. That will make everything very clear to read. The lights will be able to be on in the room, and you'll be able to see the, the screen and read everything on it from any point in the room. Um, the sound system is going to improve. And so there's a lot of things being worked out. And, uh, and we just need your patience. Except I'm not patient. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <Neither am> I. <laughs> No, I, you know, every time you're trying to do something new in technology, it's a bit of a challenge. And, uh, and I have to give these guys credit. They are working very hard to make all this happen. Just don't do it on my class. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, uh, speaking of the library, we have a, a two or three minutes here. Uh, in December and January, Marty is going to do some a special class. We, I guess, I don't know if you all know, but the library has asked us to do a class once a month for their members or anybody actually who wants to attend. And uh, 
people uh, sign up through the, they advertise it with uh, over their internet and over their flyers and so forth. So five o'clock, the second Monday of the month, uh, we have, the room is open, anybody can come um, and they can ask any question about any uh, Mac thing. 90% of the people that come are more or less new users and 90% of them are mostly iPhone and iPad users. So <clears throat> we've uh, had as, <coughs> excuse me, as few as four people. We yes, have as many as 14 or 15 people. And usually we have two or three members from the board here to try to uh, assist people. Anyway, um, November, unfortunately, uh, Veterans Day is the same day as our class. We tried to reschedule it, and uh, that was a conflict with another group that meets during the month. So we will not be able to have this class in November. But in December and January, Marty is going to have a beginner's level class, uh, mostly for t uh, iPhone and iPad. Um, and he's going to do just the basics for people. Uh, and I don't know exactly how he's going to organize it, but he's going to figure it out. He teaches at the Renaissance Academy, so he's very familiar with <clears throat> how to manage this type of thing. So if you know anybody who would benefit from this, it's free. It's from 5 to 6.30, the second Monday. And it's a two-part series that Marty's going to do on the basics of iPhone and iPad. And then starting in um, February, we will go back to the open uh, class any question class kind of thing. So uh, spread the word to people that you know who think you think would benefit from it. Um, and of course, people will be able to ask any question and we will try to help them and spread ourselves around the room. And if any of you are interested in volunteering to be a he helper, please let me know uh, because uh, you can uh, come in. Uh, what happens sometimes is somebody will ask a question and then they won't be able to find it on their phone when we're trying to explain how to answer the question. So if we have an extra helper here, they can go and sit next to that person and kind of quietly help them with that project or take them to the back of the room, something in that, in that uh, way. So here comes Kenneth. Hi. I was just talking about our uh, evening classes here on the second Monday and uh, asking people to share the information with your friends. Do you have anything you'd like to share with us today? Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, and we are, re we are remotely uh, uh, filming this to all over, wherever you wanna be, you can watch what, we're, what we just did today. Fantastic. Yes. Pardon me? Explain, Eckert. <laughs> You know, we, we, we use the, the Zoom system uh, to broadcast, uh, and anyone uh, who has access to our uh, meeting ID can dial in and, and listen and watch, uh, watch what's going on here. And we also post uh, this on our website. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.